some of us have not even given God a good praise yet might be to move some of us let's talk about some natural things look on your possession it's not you it's God claim that your own is not you it's God the, 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 that's why I said a roof over your head you have a place to go when you leave from church today he has already provided a meal for you come on somebody Hallelujah. There are some natural things that God has blessed us with. We are not even grateful to the Lord for what it, but we need to tell him, Lord, I thank you. Hey. And the thanks should not be a mouth thanks, but a heart thanks. A heart thanks. Jesus. Glory. 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 Some of you sort of speak for the black sheep of the family. You were told you would not amount to anything. Rejected. Hello, push the side. God, but God, I said, but God, 
push rich in mercy. We're with the love. He came back. Oh God. We praise your name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. But those of us that does not mind giving God thanks for what He's done already. For what he's in the process of doing. I don't know about you. Vance Gooden, he's at this moment working some things out for me. I said, I don't know about you. I said, at this moment, he's working some things out for me. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So, Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you. I greet you today in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. When I ask you to stand to your feet of this time, everyone, if you're not sick, when I ask you to stand to your feet. Hallelujah. We just coming back from a funeral. When I looked at my sister in law in that casket on yesterday morning in Fort Lauderdale. That could have been me. That could have been you. Hello, somebody. Don't feel that you're that good that you can part your lips and give God a praise. Hallelujah. You and I are not that important. Only God is important in this house right now, not you. Because if you get a cut, if it's not a tenant, you're nothing but corruption. I wish you'd talk to me. Hello, somebody. If it's not a tenant, after a while, you'll start to stink. Glory! But while I can, I have any help in here. I said, while I can, but breath is dead in my nostril and lung in my ear, I'm going to open my mouth and hear in my lung, brother. Tell someone I'm gonna praise him. Tell someone I'm gonna praise him. Tell from my heart I'm gonna praise him. Oh God, I bless your name. Oh, we thank God. Oh, no, I'm not going on that road. We thank God. I have forgotten. I thank God. Hallelujah. He chosen somebody. Hallelujah. And I'm grateful. At this time, coming to this holy desk to be God's mouthpiece, one of our committee members, women's department, that it please God, I say please God, to lay his hand on her. To let her know that this day is the day that she will open her mouth and God's going to fill it. So we that sit by will become recipients of the goodness of God as he dispenses through and by her the word that will have us to hear. This time, I call to this desk 
to talk to us the way God has spoken to her. Missioner Jean Nooks and the Holy Ghost. Father, Keto Sando, we look to you right now. Is your daughter? Is your servant? God is not her. It's not going to be her. It is you. And it is going to be you. Touch her lips right now. Anoint them. Touch her mouth. The words that leave from her mouth. Anoint it now. And as you open her mouth, let it speak as an oracle of thine. The hearts of people will be blessed. Do it now, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I am grateful. I am grateful. I'm clothed in my right mind today, and I am grateful. I've got the activities of my limbs, and I am grateful. If nothing else were to happen today, I am alive, and because of that, I am grateful. Bless the name of Jesus. Let me use this opportunity to greet our pastor and evangelist Russell, our women's president, and to greet all of you in the name of Jesus. Before you sit, if you would just turn your Bibles with me to Psalm 51. Thank you, Jesus. If you would stand with me, please. Thank you, God. We're going to read together from verse 1 through to 15. And we'll begin. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden parts thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence. Then I will teach transgressions thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud out of righteousness. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praises. God bless you. Today, if I were to use for a topic, I'm going to use brokenness. It says here that brokenness does not mean having a sad, gloomy, downcast countenance, never smiling nor laughing. It cannot be equated with deeply emotional experiences. It is possible to shed buckets full of tears without ever experiencing a moment of brokenness. Brokenness is not the same as being deeply hurt by tragic circumstances. A person may have experienced many deep hurts and tragedies, but never have been broken. Broken is not a feeling, rather it is a choice, an act of the will. It is not a one-time experience or crisis, rather it is an ongoing continual lifestyle. Brokenness is a lifestyle of agreeing with God about the true condition of one's heart and life as he sees it. It is a lifestyle of unconditional, total surrender of one's will to the will of God, 
a heart that says yes, Lord, to whatever God says. Brokenness is one's, humili one's response of humility and obedience to the conviction of the word that, and the spirit of God. You know, I read Psalm 51 and this Psalm came about because of what happened in 2 Samuel chapter 11. And I'm sure most of us, if not all of us, do know the story of what happened when D King David at the time, they were supposed to be going to war and he should have gone. But instead of going, he stayed home and he sent everybody else. And there are a few things that happened that led um, David to this. One of the first things that happened was, um, as I mentioned, David stayed home instead of having gone to war. Secondly, he, when he should have been in bed, he got up and he went to the rooftop. There he saw a beautiful woman washing herself. You know, I, I remember a while back, I taught my Sunday school class and I'd asked a question. And I, I think it was EJ. EJ was saying he blamed the woman because she had no business being on the house top. But you know what? Being on her place outside bathing. But the thing is, is David, he was the king and he should have been at war. So when we're not in our places at times, so many things could have hap can happen. So we have got to ensure that we are where we are supposed to be when we're supposed um, to be there. So here it is. He saw this beautiful woman on the housetop, beautiful to look at. And I can just imagine the thoughts that were going through his head. So then he sent and he inquired of her and he found out that she was Uriah's wife. And you know, that did not dissuade him even though he knew that that was one of his um, workers. And there Uriah was at work. He could have, you know, just let it alone, but no, he didn't. So he sent and he got her and he laid with her. Then she returned to her house. After that, she, um, she sent and told David that she was with child. David, now he was in a predicament. Saints of God, when we do things that we're not supposed to do. You know, we have often heard about white lies and somebody tells a lie and it's like, it just can't keep compounding because once you've done one wrong thing, then things will have to follow because you don't remember the, right, the first thing that you had said. So here it was, David now, he's in a predicament because he laid with another man's wife. He should have been at war. He's a king. He's supposed to be protecting those that are in his charge. So he starts now with his plan. So he sent and he called for Uriah. And he told him, he's like, he's doing it out of compassion. You are at war. Go wash yourself. Go to your house and lay with your wife. But here it is. Uriah knew what it was to be a true soldier. Uriah knew what it was to stand at his post. So instead of going to his wife's house to lay with her, he stayed right there. When David realized it didn't happen, he had to conjure up another plan. So he waited a few days and then he got Uriah drunk. But even then in his drunken state, Uriah stayed, stayed at his post. And so David realized, oh gosh, he's more in a predicament. So he had to compound things. So what he did when the war continued, he sent a note to Josiah and he said, place Uriah at the front, at the hottest part of the battle. So there he was. He had no backative. And Uriah was doing what, he should, what he's supposed to be doing. And needless to say, at the end of the day, Uriah got killed. So David thought everything was okay. Because, you know, oftentimes we do things and we tell a little lies and we are there and we do this and that. And my sister here is not seeing me, so it's okay. My brother there is not seeing me, so it's okay. But we've got to realize that there is an unseen eye. It doesn't matter where we go, saints of God. God is there and his eyes are ever watching us. So after all of that had happened, it says here, um, Bathsheba, after she mourned um, her husband's passing, she went to David's house. David married her and she bore him a son. And of course, all of this, God was not pleased because God is not pleased when we do wrong. He wants us to recognize when we do stuff and come to him boldly, be broken about it. So the story went on to say in chapter 12 that God, um, God was displeased about it. So he sent Nathan the prophet to David and he began with a parable. And he started to tell him about two men, one rich, one poor. The rich one had flocks and herds. And this poor little man had one little ewe lamb. And here it was. And he's here listening. And he went on to say that the rich man, he had a traveler. And instead of him taking from all the, 
the cattle of the herd that he had, he went and he sent and he took this one man little um, lamb. The story goes on to say that the man, um, the poor man, the, the little lamb was like a daughter to him because he, he ate from her, his table. You know, he grew up with the children. So there it was. This was more than a possession. This was part of him. But then instead of just taking from what you've got, you see when we're covetous, so many things can happen because we are always looking out where we think it's greener instead of taking what we're supposed to take and dealing with what we're supposed to deal with and making use of what we've got. Oftentimes we want so much and because of that, it will get us into trouble. And here it is, he took the man's one little, little lamb and killed it and dressed it and fed his traveler. And after Nathan told him all of that, he was so angry. And it's like he vowed that he's going to kill this man and he's going to take back to him. But the most profound statement was made when Nathan said, thou art the man. You know, the beautiful thing of this is that David recognized. And that's where Psalm 51 came about. Because oftentimes, when we're caught in an app, when we're called out, we're quick to point our fingers. We're quick to say, it's because you did this, why I did this. Never, never, it's very rare you'll find someone who will say, stand up and own up to, you know what, yes, I did it. Yes, I'm sorry. I stepped on your toe. Yes, I'm sorry. I spoke to you too harshly. Yes, I'm sorry. Oh, no. You are the one. You looked at me away funny. So I reacted. You spoke to me too hard. So I reacted. But but this was not David. So David said, Oh God, I bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. David, he realized what he had done. And as I mentioned, it was a while after he went and he penned Psalm 51. And in Psalm 51, there's some key words that he used, that showed, because I'm talking about brokenness. And when something is broken, it's split, it's set apart. Sometimes you can't even put back the fragments together. You know, in verse 1, he said, have mercy, blot out. In verse 2, he said, wash me. In verse 7, he said, purge me, wash me. In verse 8, he said, make me to hear. In verse 9, he said, hide thy face. In verse 10, he said, create in me. Verse 11, he said, cast me not away. Verse 12, he said, restore unto me. Verse 14, he said, deliver me. And in verse 15, he said, open thou my eyes. You see, when you recognize what you have done, then we can go to God and we can say like David. You know, oftentimes, it says here, before we can be broken, we've got to believe that we can make it happen. Sometimes we believe that it's okay to be in that state of mind. You know, you mess with me, so it's okay to be like that. It's, you know, the question is asked, if I were to say to you, are you okay with God today? There would be a myriad of responses. Someone would say, yes, I'm okay. Because guess what? I'm sitting in the house of God. Yes, I'm okay because I prayed this morning. Yes, I'm okay because I read my Bible. But guess what? The sin is still there. The sin is still there, hidden. It's not about just coming to church. It's not about just praying and fasting. It's not about just going and doing this and I laid hand on the sick. It is much more than that. We have got to go to God and tell God that we are sorry for the things that we have done. We've got to be broken. Lord God Almighty, we've got to say like David, create in me, God, a clean heart. Restore unto me, God Almighty. Oftentimes, oh God, when we mess up and we sit down and we think somebody owes us something, it is your duty to come to me and say something instead of being humble. You know what? Things of God, we are not humble. And when we are broken, we've got to be humble. Humility has got to take place. You know, I've noticed that so many times we might mess up. And when we mess up, it's like we are nowhere to be found. And we believe that it's the church's risk. I'm not saying we don't have a responsibility to seek after our brethren. But we believe many times that, you know what, I need to sit down. And I need to have a pity party. And you better come and call me. The evangelist better come and check on me. The missionary better come and check on me. And when that doesn't happen, it's like, oh my God, those people. But saints of God, let us be like David today. When our sins have found us out. When we are weighed. Oh, God Almighty, and we're found wanting. Let us be bold enough to go to God and say, God, I am sorry. Hallelujah. You know, we will say all these things. 
That is, we have done this. I have done this. I've gone to church. I've paid my tithe. I've given a special offering. I, 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 I. And it's always about I. But until we get to the point, I've got to be broken before God. Because you realize, I come, I've come to realize that my way is just going to get me in trouble. I've got to realize that God, he can fix his heart. Because he said in his word, that a broken and a contrite heart, he will not despise. It doesn't matter what condition you might be in today. You're not too broken. You're not too far gone. It's just for you to realize and recognize and admit the things that you have done. And just to say like David, God, have mercy upon me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You see, today, it is my desire to say like David, God, I need you to wash me. God, I need you to purge me. God, I need you to hear me. God, I need you to create in me. God, I need you to restore unto me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, I need you to deliver me. God, I've messed up. God, I've gone back to things that I should not have gone back. God, I've done things that I shouldn't have done. God, I've said things that I shouldn't have said. But God, I need you. I need you, God, to have mercy upon me. Lord God, blot all my transgressions. God, take away all my iniquities. Oh, God, my sins, they're ever before me. But have mercy, God. Have mercy upon me, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Saints of God. It's only when we are truly broken that our worship can take place. It's only when we are truly worship, are truly broken, that we can see the face of God. You know, looking on the spin of it, I was reading about the woman, the sinner woman with the alabaster box. And you know, there was this beautiful box with this perfume in there, expensive perfume. But she recognized when she came before Jesus, she recognized who she was and she recognized who Jesus was so what she did she broke the alabaster box hallelujah she wiped Jesus' feet with her tears and with her hair she used the ointment it is called spinyard and it's a precious ointment she used it she didn't think it too costly because you know what she recognized what she had done she knew she was a sinner so no, that was not too hard for her saints of god oftentimes you know we sit our pious in the house of god because we don't want to be broken because i don't want that person to say sometimes the altar call is made i don't want to go to the altar because you're going to think that i might have done something but that's all right if we mess up that's all right because god he's calling us to brokenness today he doesn't want our will he wants us to be submissive to him today. You know, my mind goes back to Jacob when he was on heading back to his brother. And when he began that night, you know, it started in his dream. And the wrestling take place. And he wrestled and he wrestled. You know, David did not get his breakthrough. And David did not receive his blessing until his, his will, until he, he was broken. He might have gone tired or whatever. But it was only then that the Lord blessed him when he said I will not let you go until you bless me but he still was holding on to his will saints of God we want something from God today but we have got to be broken we have got to get ourselves out of the way we've got to say here I am God we've got to be submissive to him sometimes it's hard because brokenness is not pretty but remember that is more than just shedding of tears. Because we can shed the tears and our hearts aren't right. We can wall on the floor. And we can do all kinds of things. But to be truly broken is recognizing that we have sinned. Is recognizing where we are. And realizing that we of ourselves, we can't do anything about it. But it's the God of heaven who is merciful. He is merciful. You might be here today and you might be saying... I just can't. You know, I've done all these things. But God is saying, you're not too far gone. He just wants you to be broken. 
He just wants you to be broken. He just wants me to be broken. Because I can stand here today. And when it's all said and done, if I'm not broken, then it doesn't make any sense. You know, true... Oh God. When we are broken, authentic worship will take place. When we are broken, authentic worship will take place. Saints of God, God is calling us today to a state of brokenness. You know, this song came to me, um, Michael Stanley, he did it. And the last part, the last stanza of the song says, brokenness, brokenness is what I long for. Brokenness is what I need. Brokenness is what I long for. It says, take my heart and mold it. Take my mind, transform it. Take my will, conform it to yours, God. Let's that be our prayer on today. To be broken to God before God. To tell him to take our hearts. To tell him to take our wills, our stubborn wills. Our stubborn minds. Sometimes we are so stubborn. You know, I, I, I am prime example of that you know sometimes I, my husband and I will be talking and he will say he say I need to send you I need to go work extra and say, um, have you go back to law school and the reason why he said that is that in my mind I think I'm not supposed to lose so I will argue and I will argue and I will argue and I'll argue and even argue my way out but saints of God that's not what God wants from us today he wants us to be honest enough before him and before our brethren right to realize when we have done something, it doesn't matter how small it might be. You might have bat an eye on somebody. You think, oh, that's no big deal. It is a big deal. You know, going back to David, David did all these things. And it was against, he did all those things. But he said, it's you, God, that I've sinned against. We have got to realize that when we do our brothers and our sisters thing, at the end of the day, it's God we are sitting against. You know, sometimes we think our brothers and our sisters, they don't matter. So you can treat them any old way. But it matters because everything ultimately ends with God. Saints of God, God is calling us today to a state of brokenness. God bless you. The preachers preached. God has spoken. So we sing this song. Let the church say amen. Powerful. I say powerful. Hallelujah. Tell somebody he was talking to me. Glory. Brokenness. We heard today. God can do nothing. He can't do anything. With anybody. If they are not broken. You see. When you feel at your hole. Nobody can reach you. Not even God. But when you recognize. That you're in a spot. That no one else can do anything with it. But God. Then you will surrender. You will submit. And say here am I. Lord. I give up. I give up. Brokenness has a certain attitude with it. It carries a certain spirit. But the unsaved man smote himself and said, be merciful unto me, 
as sin. God has spoken. And there's one thing. David knew what he did. And we know what we've done. You see, he was not like us. When God found him, he gave it up. Now when God find us, we act indifferently. Hello somebody. We put on even the more. But he did not fool himself. Hello somebody. He did not act like all was well. He said, have mercy upon me. Oh God. Have mercy according to loving kindness and according to the multitude of the tender mercies. God blotted out. I don't like what I see. I don't like what I hear. God blotted out.